Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Eric Grandin. I'm the owner operator of Sugar Bottom Farms in Ovapa, West Virginia, in Clay County. Today, we're going to go, uh, go through a hive inspection. Basically, in any hive inspection, it's an evaluation to uh, assess the colony's health, its growth, or lack thereof. I was taught to always be able to fi figure out what happened last week, what's going on now, and what's getting ready to happen. That way, you're a proactive beekeeper. So, that's what we'll be doing today. Before we start our uh, bee inspection, you need protective gear. Always wear a veil in the bee yard. Uh, it's safety first. Uh, they go for the eyes and the ears. So don't forget that. Uh, the other two basic tools you'll need is a hive tool and a smoker. That's the basics and that's all we're gonna use today. Now normally, uh, just uh, in order to protect the bees and myself, I'll use a little bit of smoke before I open the hive. Smoke the entrance and underneath the lid and just close that back up for a few seconds now basically all the bees are down inside now so we don't have to worry about uh, smashing any bees unnecessarily now in order to do a proper hive inspection you actually have to inspect the entire hive so what I do is usually break it down to the smallest uh, lowest element and, and work my way back up Now, all these, uh, these hives, we started from five packages about the middle of May. And I think we have 21 hives out of those five right now. So uh, each one's kind of small, which is okay. Uh, we just basically converted these out of nuke boxes. I'm just gonna smoke them a little bit. Again, this is to protect the bee more so than myself. And uh, when you use smoke, uh, what they do is they go down and start gorging on food. That way they're not really paying attention to what you're doing and uh, it's a lot safer for them. Uh, this right here is a miticide uh, mite treatment. It's called Apivar. And basically you just hang that in the brood area uh, for 42 days. Now what I like to do is remove the first frame to the outside, making sure there's no bees and that way it allows a nice little bee space so you don't uh, mistakenly uh, smash the queen and uh, like i said before you basically want to look at every frame uh, just to assess as you can see uh, they're starting to draw this frame here so uh, i'm going to mark this frame with an x and that tells me uh, on my next inspection how far they were and that way i can assess their growing and like I said, they, they start from the middle and kind of work their way down. So we're just gonna, okay. This should be our first, yeah, it's still working. That's okay. Uh, basically you have three casts of bees in the hive. Uh, the female workers make up about 93% of the population. Uh, depending on age, even in hours, depends on what job they're doing. In order to do this, uh, build this comb, day 14 through 18, uh, the bees are, that's when they produce the wet wax the best. So that's probably what these bees are. They're uh, working on the, building the cells out. Uh, during the spring and summer, honeybees will live about anywhere from four to six weeks. In the fall and the winter, they can live four to six months. And basically, a lot of it has to do with activity the, the bees literally work themselves to death. Now, when I go through an inspection, the first thing I look for is uh, eggs. I don't uh, start looking for the queen right away. Uh, this is an old brood frame. As you can see, the little moon-shaped brood area. Uh, there's a few cap cells left to hatch. Actually, this one right here is gonna hatch in a day, but uh, there's no eggs or larvae on this side. Now on this side, uh, it's mainly a food frame now. Uh, there's nectar and pollen on this frame. Uh, that is nectar right here. Uh, the collar is the pollen uh, capsules that they bring in on their pollen sacs. And again, uh, these are about all female. Uh, I'll, I'll point out a drone if we find one, and the queen if we find her. 
just from what I've seen so far, I'm already uh, kind of concerned. I have not yet to find eggs or larvae. That could mean that the hive is queenless. Uh, this, this hive hadn't been checked for about 10 days. Uh, that's why we're not finding any larvae. Uh, just so happens I may have injured the queen uh, last inspection. That happens. Maybe the, uh, the queen is in the upper box, but she hasn't laid it all in this bottom one. That, like I said, that kind of concerns me. Okay, here we have the larva. It's about time. Okay. If you look right in this area right here, they're like a grub, but a lot smaller. Uh, they, they tend to form the letter C in the, in the cell. Uh, and they're white and pearly. And that's a sign of healthy larva. This is the beginning of a queen cup. Uh, there's nothing in it, so we don't need to be concerned about them growing a queen. But uh, I usually just smash these just to make sure uh, that they don't build a queen. Uh, normally, if they, uh, they try to supersede my queen, that's basically the only time you actually need to find her to assess her health, her laying ability, and all that. Uh, I try to make the decision for the honeybees most of the time about superseding uh, the queen, and I use I judge her productivity, and uh, usually I'll replace her if she needs replaced. This last working frame, they're just starting to work here, so we're going to put an X on it. And again, that'll show me how far they've gotten the next time I uh, will inspect this hive. I normally go through uh, all my hives about a week every 10 days. That way uh, I don't allow my bees to swarm. Uh, instead of swarming, I'll actually do an artificial swarm and make an increase. I'll get an extra hive out of it. Instead of having to catch a swarm, I'll catch it here and just move it next door. <laughs> You probably notice how gentle my bees are, and uh, they are a, an Italian Carnolian hybrid. They come out of the queen comes out of Hawaii. They're a VSH queen, which means Varroa sensitive hygienic. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, they almost rid themselves of the mites. The gentleman that developed this queen has been treatment free for five years, and that's my goal here on Sugar Bottom Farm. Uh, to be treatment free. Right now there's very few places in the United States that, that are treatment free. And mites are the largest killer of the honeybee. Uh, they wiped out the, nearly half of the population in the late 80s. And uh, we're still rebuilding from, from that. And again, I'm gonna take out this first frame. Make sure our queen's not there. This is uh, just an empty drawn frame. Now, since we didn't find the queen on the bottom and very few uh, brood, we're hoping she's gonna be up here. Here's some young larva. After the cycle to uh, becoming a honeybee, uh, it's a 21 day cycle. For the first three days, they're an egg. Uh, from day four through 10, they're a larva. They get capped on day 10. And uh, for 12 days, they are capped and then they go through the metamorphosis into a honeybee and they emerge on day 21. Every, every female honeybee gets real jelly for the first three days of life. If they choose to make it a queen, they'll be fed royal jelly their entire life. So now I'm, I'm pretty confident the queen is in here somewhere. Again, I really don't look for the queen. Uh, I mainly look for eggs and very young larva. The young larva just shows that uh, since I've been in here, there's been eggs laid. There's the queen right there. As you notice, uh, she has the same upper body as a normal uh, female worker bee, except she has a larger thorax, that little black shiny spot, and the, her abdomen is much longer. So she's long and slender. Uh, she has the exact size, same size wings as a regular worker, yet hers only come halfway down her body. 
since she's so much longer. Uh, she can lay up to 2,000 eggs a day. Uh, right now she's not. They always slow down in the fall. But uh, every time she stops, she has a group of attendants uh, to take care of her, her needs. They bathe her, clean her, take out her excrements, feed her, and uh, all she does is go around looking for empty cell to lay an egg. And that's what she's doing right now. She's looking for an empty cell. Uh, today, we want to thank the Food and Farm Coalition uh, for coming by at Sugar Bottom Farm. Again, my name is Eric Grandin. Uh, here, Sugar Bottom Farm is a full service beekeeping supply company. That means we sell honeybees, queens, uh, man lake equipment, and we also provide free training in both lecture and hands on. Uh, you can also buy our products, our honey, in uh, several places around the state. Uh, we are in the small town market in Clay. Uh, Little Creeks and Moore in Ripley, uh, Shipwreck in both the Town Center Mall and Huntington Mall, uh, the Wild Ramp in Huntington, and Crowns Floral in Parkersburg. Uh, we offer seven different varieties of honey, not only our West Virginia honey, but uh, six different varieties from our hives in, on the Big Island of Hawaii. Uh, so I'm sure you can find something that will tempt your taste buds. So uh, if you're interested in uh, coming by for some training, just uh, reach out to us. Uh, my email is egrandon at frontier.com or you can uh, email us through our website, which is americashoney.com and sbfhoney.com. So uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Please come by for a visit. We're always happy to stop and answer any questions you might have. Uh, that's it from Sugar Bottom Farm. Mm -hmm.